Hello, dreamers, doers, believers, and achievers, wonderful winners, and powerful people. How are you? I'm Dwayne Shig, and welcome to Talking Books. This is the place for people who like books, reading them, and writing them. And tonight, this time, we are going to have a great guest tonight, evening, morning, whatever part of the country you're in, whatever the part of the world you're in when you're watching this. Um, we have Miss Erica Worthily. She is the author, now get this title, she is the author of Dear everybody admit there is hurt that's right dear everybody admit there is hurt interesting title topic book and we're going to get into that uh, as we welcome miss erica worthily to talking books how are you today i'm doing wonderful how are you i am doing very very well uh, and i'm glad that you are with us here on talking books to talk about your new book and let me ask you, uh, well, before we jump in, uh, just give us a quick introduction of who you are before we jump into the book. Sure. I am a mother, an educator, a social worker. Um, I'm a licensed clinical social worker in Jacksonville, Florida. I spend majority of my um, time working with youth in schools, working with teachers, working with parents. I have a private practice where I provide um, counseling and doing group therapy. And I also do workshops to help people understand mental health. Oh, great. Okay. Now your book, Dear Everybody, Admit There Is Hurt. I want to, I want to, uh, I'm torn between, I want to get into the book, but that title is just messing with my brain. Um, let's talk about what the book is about and then we'll go to the title. Uh, okay. Let us know what is, what is, what is your book about? So the book is about addressing grief with children. Okay. Which is a difficult topic for adults, but a lot of times children are left out of the conversation when adults are having the conversation about grief. And therefore okay. they don't know necessarily how to cope. They don't necessarily know that their emotions that they're experiencing is related to grief. So this book is used as a communication tool to discuss grief and death with children. Okay, grief and death with children. And so was there a was there something specific that moved you, compelled you, drew you to to the writing of this book? Absolutely. So this is actually the second of three books that I have. Um, this is one of the topics that came up most often when I was working in an elementary school as a school-based counselor. And I would have kids coming in my office and they may have been referred to me because of anger management issues or academic issues or whatever other kind of issues. And then when I get them in my office, it turned out that a grandparent died, an uncle mm -hmm. died, a grandmother died, a parent died. and and the kids would tell me the same thing. They're like, nobody wants to talk to me about it. Oh. And so it ended up that the, symp the symptoms and signs that they were seeing as acting out in the classroom were related to grief expressed because they didn't know how to express it. Wow. So why is it uh, in your estimation based on you know your expertise, um, and as you said, the children would say, nobody wants to talk to me about it, um, why do you, based on your experience, why do you uh, say that it is that parents, grandparents, adults, grown-ups have a problem with talking to kids about it? Why is it difficult for us to do that? Because nobody talked to them about it when they were younger. Oh! It's usually a conversation that people avoid. Like they oh. cry, cry during the funeral or they cry in the initial aftermath and then they just kind of tuck away the emotions or press past the emotions or they cope in an unhealthy way, but not necessarily taking the time to deal with it and heal from it. And if they were never taught how to do it when they were younger, how can they pass that along to kids when they have their own kids? Wow. So you're, so it's is it just they don't know how or don't know how and don't want to? It could be a combination of both depending on the situation. Okay. Um, like, for example, one of the boys that I was working with, he was in fourth grade at the time, and it was actually his grandfather that had died before I met him. <clears throat> and so he was he was coping with that. And he would say right. things like, I can hear him. 
And so the teacher's looking at him like, is something wrong with him? He needs to be checked out. He needs to be evaluated. I'm like, but those are his memories of his grandfather. Okay. There's nothing wrong with this child. So things like that happen where adults project things onto kids that's not necessarily the case. Woo! Then a few months later, his father was murdered. So I had to help him process that because his mom, she was telling me when I was talking to her, was literally saying, I don't know what to say with say to him because the grandfather that died was his father's father. Uh -huh. So she was like, I don't know what to say to him. And his grandmother wasn't really talking about it because she was grieving with herself. So you have this 10 year old boy that really doesn't know. He wants to talk about it. He wants to be able to express his emotions about it. But the adults are like, no, nah, go sit down somewhere or you need to be evaluated. Something's wrong with you because you're saying you're hearing voices. And, you know, it's not a matter of hearing voices. He's Those are memories. Right. Right. So the value that comes with talking about it is what? And well, I guess I have a two part question, uh, because as people of color, oftentimes we don't talk about our problems. You know, they tell us, OK, go pray about it or right. something like that. And so um, and that's talking if you, you know, if you really think about it. But right. uh, therapy is not something that we historically uh, do so what is the benefit of talking it out and why is it that I guess you may answer the same way you did before why is it that that's not something prevalent uh, in our culture historically so I think a lot of it has to do with the idea that uh, um, we have to maintain this this the effort to remain like you're strong okay you know okay. hold having that front that you're strong right and that you can handle things i think that has a lot to do with it like we should be able to take it we should be able to keep moving because we're strong people and i think okay. that being strong messes a lot of people up Mm. And they don't allow themselves to be vulnerable when they need to be vulnerable. Okay, okay, okay. I think this interview is over. My feet are hurt <laughs> right now. So uh, I don't think I want to talk to you no more. <laughs> Why are you getting all in my business? <laughs> <laughs> it's part of my job. I'm a therapist. <laughs> and so, <laughs> what I do. <laughs> so, the benefit of talking about it is what? Healing. Okay. Um, it's it's an avenue of healing. It gives a person. That's why I'm. I know you haven't asked the question yet, but that's part of the purpose for the title. Okay. Okay. It's acknowledging your emotions. It's acknowledging your feelings and what you're experiencing versus pressing past it. Wow. Okay. Let's 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 go there with the title. Um, Dear everybody, admit there is hurt. And so you already alluded to it. So. Uh, where did that come from and why is what is the significance of that title title? Where did it come from? Well, I wanted there are different forms of grief. There are there are, there are many different forms of grief, but I wanted people to understand that this book was specifically about death. Okay. And so I was looking for a way to make it an acronym so that it's there, but it's not in your face there. That okay. makes sense. Oh, right, right, right. Got it, got it, got it. So who is it for? Is it for children? Is for the well you said it was for children, basically. So it's for it's for children or the parents of children who are dealing with grief. So it's for everybody. Okay. Really. So my books are written as children's books, but they are meant to be communication tools. So it's not one of those books that you sit and you hand it to a child and say, I know you're grieving, go read this book. It's not that type of book. It's meant to be put a child next to you or sit at a dinner table or, you know, sit on a sofa, sit on a porch and, hey, let's read this together. Let's go through this together. And so the format of it is similar to like question and answer. So as if a child is asking a question and I'm providing the adults with a response. 
Now, see there, you're going to mess around and make somebody cry in front of their kids or their grandkids. And, you know, and there's uh, nothing wrong with that. Well, you know, brothers, you know, we can't be crying all over oh, the place because that means I ain't strong. <laughs> huh? Everybody has tear ducts. You gotta let it out. Oh, everybody has tear ducts. Yes, yes. And that is a process that is difficult. Um, I'm a minister and obviously I do uh, funerals. And one of the things that I tell people is that uh, you have your own way of grieving. And people can't, you know, sometimes people say, oh, be strong or they're in a better place. All that may be true, but that's still my grandmother that's gone. The person's still gone. I'm still, they're still gone. They're still a missing part of your life. And getting answers, as a matter of fact, um, just this morning, uh, someone called me, a uh, young man, he just got accepted into Cal State LA, uh, that's a member of my church, he was killed this morning, uh, messed me up, and so having to deal with that grief, right? and I can imagine the other, uh, he was a member of our church, as I said, the other uh, kids in the church that were dealing with him, and so this would be this would be problematic to deal with you know and so your book so your book gives it gives answers to why and how or just basically op allows me to open up and share my feelings but are there answers in there or what what do i do now what do i tell my kid so it it prompts things like you know um what what am i feeling Okay. So oh. Like, okay. Sometimes it might be sadness. Sometimes you might be smiling and feeling joy because it's like, okay, I know that, you know, if they are a believer, I know they're in a better place. Or it could be joy from remembering what, um, what experiences you did have or what memories you did have. Um, it, it, it addresses the fact that tears will flow at any given moment. Yes. Whether happy tears or not, because that's just the way grief operates. It addresses the fact that there's no time limit on grief. People can't tell you you're over it by now. Like there's a whole lot of things you can say, okay, at some point this will be not with grief. A person could have died 26 years ago. You're still going to be grieving over that person. Yeah. It might not be visible or obvious every day. But that doesn't mean that the grief doesn't still exist. So wow. it talks about, um, it talks about um, you know, whether or not there can, a child may be anxious about whether they'll lose someone else. Mm. Um, so the format of the book starts off with a note to the adults. And it also challenges the adults to be honest about their grief and their grief process because they are the model, the example for the child. And okay. then there's the, the meat of it, which it's it's about maybe about 10 pages or so or so. But it's basically like, okay, well, you know, what happens if I can't get this person off my mind? Well, then we talk about it or we draw pictures about it or we go through photo albums together. You know what I mean? So I like it prompts other activities that you can do in addition to talking about it. Okay. And then at the, um, there's a poem that, that's um, at the end with, that kind of brings it all together. There's an acronym for grief. Mm. And then there's also strategies and activities that you can do that wow. have to do with like physical exercises, getting creative, practicing mindfulness and goal setting and planning. And part oh. of the reason for the goal setting and planning is to help, help them to think forward. Okay. Because and for you, you're still here. Right, right, so what right. What do you want to do with your life? Oh, okay, okay. If you've just joined us, this is Talking Books, and we're talking with Miss Erica Worthily. She's the author of Dear Everybody, Admit There Is Hurt. And you've helped so much. Um, a lot of the things you said, and, you know, that the grieving process is not necessarily over after the funeral or two weeks after whatever uh, my father the greatest man i've ever known he passed away 10 years ago and if i keep talking about it we ain't gonna be able to finish this interview because like you said 10 years ago but it doesn't you know and and he and i have the same birthday oh wow so you know but yeah so i, I can talk, I, I, mean, I talk about things like when holidays come up or special occasions okay you know, 
family together and then okay there's a there's an empty chair or you know what I mean there's there's right. so much and, and I just I just feel like like I said there's one of the topics that came up most often where a child would say to me even a child as young as um she was a kindergartner as a matter of fact and her uncle passed away and she was like she was like I'm sad about it but my mom won't talk to me about it because it makes her sad oh, you know what I mean so, yeah like, you know, that's why I said it's used as a communication tool. So even if the parent is having a difficult time talking about it, they don't necessarily have to think of something to say. They can right. read the book. Oh, I like that. I like that. So is there is there a particular age group? Uh, is that age group or age appropriate, you know, to, to talk about certain things? Is there a particular age group that, you know, this book is for as it relates to children? So it's written basically for like, maybe like, four through elementary age it's written like at that level okay but again, it can be read by anyone because i want it to be something that's easy to digest and easy to understand okay um gonna go here and if it's over the line you tell me and i'll apologize um okay. educationally intellectually you've learned how to deal with this all of this but in terms of your own personal grief does that is that something that contributed to you know uh the the book and you know how you dealt with your grief or you talking to a child or a daughter or a niece or somebody uh was that a contributing factor actually when writing the book no okay it was not and i've been asked that question before okay um it was based on what i understood in working with other kids okay Ironically, about three months after I published it, my grandfather passed away. Oh. And I was like picking up my own book. Like, okay. <laughs> because like my, my grandmother, my grandmother passed away um about 10 years ago. My grandmother. Okay. Um and I think and and we were really close. I think for it, I think. In particular, the death of my grandfather hit really hard because right. he was my last living grandparent. Okay. So, so I think that one hit more harder. Okay. But as far as experiencing grief when I was a child, not that way. Like I know children whose grandparents have died or okay. children whose parents have died. I didn't have that kind of experience. Okay. Time. Okay. What do you want people to leave with after reading the book? What do you want them to leave with? What will they leave with after reading the book? What's the takeaway? Um, two, two main things. One is related to the title. Admit that you're hurting. Admit that yeah. you're hurting after someone dies, after someone passes away. And don't be afraid to have that conversation with children. So that they can appropriately learn how to cope, mm. um, whether it's something that was expected or something that was tragic or unexpected. Um, don't be afraid to have that conversation. It will be difficult. You know, it's not an easy topic to talk about. Um, but also, again, it could be a tool for people. Maybe they know of children. Uh, or families with children and it can be given to the family where there ch may be children involved you know so that whether it's teachers or um other people like family friends and things like that the biggest thing is allowing yourself the opportunity to heal but also allowing the child the opportunity to go through the healing process the second thing is and we touched on it a little bit earlier, and I write it when I sign the books, is allow the tears to flow. Ah, because yeah. when you try and stop it, it will mess you up. Just let it happen. And it can be at any point of day, and it can be a great day. And the tears don't always mean that you're sad. Right. They don't always mean that you're sad. It could just be one of those memories that comes to mind while you're watching TV, you know, <laughs> right. I remember watching this with my granddad, you know, or whatever the case may be, but allow the tears to flow. Okay. Okay. And for the fellas, 
get over the thing just because I'm crying doesn't mean I'm weak. I'm less of a man, right? <laughs> and you know, I mean, that's like you mentioned, like our with our culture, you see, that's why so many men wear shades to funerals. Ah. They don't want anybody to see their face. I thought they was trying to be cool, like Charlie Wilson or something. You know, you know that is not true. <laughs> <laughs> I, see, you know, sometimes you say stuff, it sounded good in here, but once it came out of here, uh, <laughs> that ain't it. But I couldn't take it back. <laughs> but, but yeah. But I think it's important for boys to see a man cry. Yes, 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 yes. The balance, because as you said, the balance, the balance to know that, okay, it's okay to cry. It doesn't make me any less of a man. And right. you said it earlier, it precipitates healing mm -hmm. and oh my goodness oh my goodness okay 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 we gotta go we gotta go but this is a conversation that can go on and on how can people get a copy of the book so my website is erica in as in nicole worthily.com and there's a products tab so it can order be ordered directly from my website um, or it can be ordered on Amazon, uh, Barnes and Noble, Books a Million, any of the online platforms that can be ordered. Okay, give us the um, website one more time so people can get the book. EricaNWorthily.com slash products. And how can people contact you if they need you to come and uh, talk to their husband because he's crying? I mean, talk to the children. Uh, talk to the children, talk to the, <laughs> if they want to have you come, talk to their group, organization, whatever. How do people get in touch with you? Same, um, same website, but you can also find me on social media, um, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Um, and it's by my name. I'm not, you know, no, <laughs> nothing, nothing hidden, no special, special names. Just look okay. up Erica. Literally, I, I tried to make it easy for people to locate me. Okay, then. Miss Erica Worthily, author of Dear Everybody, Husbands, Fathers, Sons, Everybody, Mothers, Grandparents, Everybody, Admit There Is Hurt. This is powerful, and I thank you for being with us on Talking Books. Any closing words you'd like to share? I think that it's really important for adults to be comfortable, become more comfortable with talking with kids about any type of emotion. So not just necessarily grief, okay. but especially now um, with everything that's happened over the last year, anxiety is on the rise, depression is on the rise. Don't be afraid to talk to your kids, get them away from the electronics. Right. <laughs> have conversations and bond with the children. <laughs> powerful, powerful. And you have other books on that website also, correct? Yes. Yes. I have two other books. The first book is called I Scream Because I'm Angry. Okay. Yes, it does sound like <laughs> I sing because I'm happy and that's on right. purpose. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's called I Scream Because I'm Angry. And the other book is titled But What If, which addresses anxiety. All right. Miss Erica Worthily, author of Dear Everybody Admit There Is Hurt. Thank you so much for being with us on You're Talking Books. Welcome. And if you or an author, you have a book that you want to talk about on this platform, contact us at drshig at gmail.com, drshig at gmail.com. And as we go, I want you to remember that, yes, times are tough, but guess what? You are too. Stay encouraged. Be blessed. Thank you for being with us.